Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. It's that time again. It's Friday. It's time for 10 questions in 10 minutes or less. Hey guys, make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video. I got two special announcements for you at the end of the video. First question is from Matt in Missouri. I have an area where I'd like to put a slab for a shop. It would be six inches thick, 3,000 PSI concrete. And I can place, I want to place a lift on it. The area I have now is an old RV parking spot and has several years and inches of gravel that have been dumped there and compacted. It isn't perfectly level, but it's less than four inches difference. I'm looking at a 20 by 40 floor and the question is, would it be okay to just form on top of the existing gravel base and pour or will I need to pay someone to dig it all out? Well, Matt, my suggestion would be to pay someone, dig it out and do it right. Um, you, you really don't know what's down there for a sub base. You're putting down a bunch of new concrete that's going to cost a lot of money. Just hire somebody, dig it out, put in some good gravel, make sure it's nice and level, and then compact it, and then put your slab in. That would be what I would suggest. Question two from Bonnie in Valley View, Alberta, British Columbia. I'd used salt on a front patio a few years ago, and it's been crumbling ever since. I want to fix this and make it nice again. How do I repair crumbling concrete? Well, if it's not crumbling too bad, I mean, if it's just the surface that's peeling off this, then I would use a product from Ardex called CD Fine. Mix this up with water. I have a video where I'm actually overlaying a patio and rebrooming it. That's, that's the same stuff. And uh, it's pretty easy to use. Put it down, trowel it down, and then you broom right over it, and it gives you a nice new surface. Now, if it's worse than that, then I would probably, I'm probably going to recommend just hiring a professional. If it's, if it's deeper than, say, a quarter width, eighth of an inch or more, um, then you're going to get into one to hire a professional. So, Ardex CD Fine if it's thin, and, and watch my video, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll have a link for that in the description. Hey guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the little bell notification. I'm coming out with two to three videos a week, and you'll stay updated on all my videos. Also, if you like this video, go down there and give it a thumbs up. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. All these questions come from the YouTube comments. They come from my website. They come from uh, my emails. So I'm pulling all these questions from there. And if you have a question, leave one in the comments. Question three, Ernie in Illinois. I'd like to pour a concrete slab four inches in height along the length of the back of my garage wall to raise up our storage cabinets so they're not getting wet from the water that comes in off the cars. The foundation has settled in a way that the water doesn't always go to the drain in the middle of the floor. So my question is uh, how to frame it and do I need a certain type of concrete to do this? Well, to frame it, I would just use a two by four. And what we do is we use a, a hammer drill with a concrete bit in it, and we drill down through the two by four, and then we fasten it to the concrete with what's called a Tapcon screw. Now, you get them right at any big box store. So uh, a hammer drill, a drill bit for concrete, and then a Tapcon. And you'll, the, usually the drill bits are right with the Tapcon screws, the ones you need. So that's how I would form it. And then the concrete, you could just use regular quickcrete for the concrete. Um, pour it inside the form, mag it off, and trowel it, and you're good. Question four from John. This is about my concrete countertop mix design, the video I put out a, a few weeks ago. So go check that out. He's asking, will that mixture stand up to the weather, such as extreme temperature changes? Summer temperatures over 100, and winter temperatures well below zero. Yes, John, it definitely will. That's, that's a 6,000, 7,000 PSI concrete mix. Um, it's going to hold up to that, no problem at all. Just make sure you seal it well. I'll have a link for that concrete mix down in the description. And uh, so your simple answer is yes. It holds up to extreme temperatures very well. Number five, I've got an epoxy coating on my driveway, and it's too slippery. I want to remove the surface epoxy and leave the raw finished concrete. What should my steps be? Well, you're going to have to grind that off, basically, is what you're going to do. Is You're going to either go to a, a rental place and rent a walk-behind diamond grinder and 
they'll have the diamonds there for you and you'll grind that epoxy off back down to the concrete and then you could you could seal that surface with a good penetrating sealer um, I'll have one down I use radon seals deep penetrating sealer I'll have a link for that in the description or you just hire a professional like myself to come in and grind it and do the work for you one or the other but you're gonna have to grind that epoxy off question six is it possible to acid stain my basement floor and then apply a penetrating sealer well the simple answer to that is yes as long as it doesn't have a sealer on it um, you're gonna acid stain it you're gonna let that sit for four or five hours then you're gonna neutralize the acid stain with a uh, baking soda in water or ammonia in water and then you're gonna rinse that off and rinse it again and rinse it again make sure there's no residue left then you're gonna let it dry out for at least 24 hours if not 48 hours then you can apply your penetrating sealer. Again, I'd use the radon seal sealer. I'll have that link down in the description. Question seven. What concrete sealer or primer do you suggest for new, untreated, exterior concrete walls? That's simple. That's, again, radon seals, deep penetrating concrete sealer. It's used for both floors and walls. Uh, that's what I use. I've got a video about me spraying some concrete walls with it. I'll link that down in the description. You can just check that out. It's real easy to use. And uh, that gets in there. It penetrates deep into the concrete. It expands. It blocks all the pores. And it blocks any moisture from going through the walls. Question 8. Jason in Colorado asks, Just trying to find an, the overall sequence of events for a future home I'm, I'm going to build, as far as the concrete slabs go. From the slab pour with the radiant heat, all the way to my finished concrete floors on the interior. Uh, we're going to have radiant heat on one level and we want the concrete floors throughout the whole home. Is there a tip is it typically another thin layer of concrete poured over the initial slab for the interior floors once the roof and the walls are up or just a good cleanup and polish of the existing floors? I assume we prefer the light gray appearance already. Yeah, you're not going to have to pour concrete over your existing floors. You're just going to have to protect them. And what we use, what I recommend, is a product called Ramboard. I'll have a link for that so you can check that out down in the description. It's uh, it's almost like it's like almost looks like cardboard. It's like a a roofing type paper. You lay that down over the concrete. It protects spills from going through it. It protects the concrete from getting chipped from dropping things on it. It'll protect it from being from paint being dropped on it, but it also allows the concrete to breathe, so which is very important because you don't want shadows. So ram board is what I'd use and what I'd suggest for that. Now again, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button now. Uh, hit the little bell notification. I'm coming out with these videos every Friday, plus usually a couple other ones during the week about other things we do with concrete. Question nine. How will you fix a swimming pool with cracks on the floor and the sidewalls? Do you think it's possible? Yes, definitely. We do that stuff all the time. So the concrete floor cracks, you're going to fix with a product called Crack Weld. I'll have a link for that in the description. And the foundation of the swimming pool, you're going to use Radon Seals DIY Foundation Crack Repair Kit. That's a two-pot polyurethane foam. You inject that into the cracks. It expands 20 times its size. It completely seals up the crack, and it won't allow any water to go through the crack after that. Um, you can check that out. I have, actually have a course on how to do that. You'll have a, a link for that down in the description, but uh, that's what I'd use. Question 10. Is there anything I can do to make an outdoor slab of ready mix concrete cure to a uniform white or gray surface color? Well, that's kind of tough. I mean, concrete's almost like a, a living animal sometimes. If, uh, if part of it's in the shade, part of it's in the sun, it's going to cure a little different. It's going to be a little different shade. If some of it gets wet, if you spill something on it, if you, if you put plastic on it or a tarp on it, it's going to cure differently under those spots. Usually, it, over time, it'll cure out evenly. It may take a week. It may take a month. It could take six months for some slabs. It's, just, it's hard to tell sometimes, but... In most cases, it's going to cure out evenly. You just have to give it time. All right, guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I got a special announcement here at the end. And I got two of them, actually. One is about my concrete slab course. 
I've got a special coupon code for you guys that watch this video and watched it all the way to the end. If you type in, if you want to learn how to do a concrete slab like we do, um, I got a really good deal for you. You're going to be able to get my $49 course for just $9. If, but you got to type in the coupon code word buggy, B-U-G-G-Y. Type that in there. You'll get it for nine bucks. It's a great value. Um, you got to learn a lot from that. My second one is I just put out a foundation crack repair course. This is a DIY course where I'm teaching you how to inject foundation cracks to permanently seal them and stop them from leaking. We do it. We do a ton of these for my customers. I got to charge about. I charge about 500 bucks a crack, guys. So by learning how to do this yourself, if you need to do it, you're going to save yourself a ton of money. Or if you could actually start your own business doing this uh, foundation crack repair and uh, get that course, it's $15 for the course, guys. I mean, you can't beat it. You're watching a pro do it. I'm walking you right through it step by step. So uh, go ahead and grab that. I'll have a link for that in the description also. Thanks, guys, for watching the video. We'll see you next Friday.